does racism still exist today? What about the Ferguson case? What about the situation that is happening all over the country? Two cops just got shot and we go on and on and on. What do you do about racism? And what is it that you personally could do to make a difference instead of walking away from what you know is truth, from what you know is not, and what is the correct reaction to deal with the situations? That is our topic today. And with me is Coach Shannon McCoy, who knows all about that. And I know when we start talking that you too can find out at the end of the show what the answer is to the problem today and how we need to deal with it. Shannon, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. Glad you're here. Now, you used to date a blonde. Yes, yes. <laughs> what was that like? Well, in the town that I was raised in, um, actually, she was a, she was a, what would you call a strawberry blonde with red freckles. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the town that I was raised in, it was very challenging. And it was not only challenging, but um, I would say it, would, it could be downright dangerous uh, back in uh, the late 80s and early 90s, yes. Yeah, okay, I'm trying to follow you. Mm -hmm. And you know, to me, that doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. So could you a little bit clarify that for me right, a little yeah. better? Yeah, you'd think I'd be talking about the 60s or 50s or something. No, but it's no. later than that. Right, yeah, because I actually lived in Northern California um, in between Sacramento and Chico in a little town called Yuba City, California. And it was, a, it was kind of like a, a farm community, that lots of orchards and so forth. And in that particular area, there were, um, when my folks moved us there, there was just one or two black families. And uh, I remember us being the first. There may have been another, um, but, um, but it seemed like it was a little bit, a couple years after we had moved there first. And it was very uh, clear to us, became clear to me uh, right around age five uh, that there was a difference that I, w I was unaware of before that because I wasn't raised to notice color. Yeah, and so I yeah. didn't really, didn't, you know, it was around the kindergarten uh, era when I started to learn that there was real issues that I'd have to learn to deal with. And, at that you know, young of an age. Yeah. Now, was this from the parents of the children, from the teachers, or from the other kids? Um, my first experience was from the children, and obviously uh, where that came from was their parents, and over time I figured that out. I, I didn't know that as a child. I thought that it was, I just thought that the kids were mean and hateful, and I, at first I didn't understand why, and the words, the names that they were calling me, I didn't even know what they were and what they meant until wow. I asked my mom, <laughs> wow. and that was a pretty devastating experience. And all of a sudden you realize that you're not the color that they are, and that yeah. that is not okay. Yes, yeah, I didn't even I, think I, anything of it. It was like a difference in hair color to me. Wow, Skin wow. Was no then different you than... top it all, and you start dating a blonde. What were yeah. you thinking? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so how did the community <laughs> respond to that? Yeah, well, you know, it's. I would say even in the earlier stages, even even in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, before getting old enough to really date, um, it was responded to in a, in a strange way because even as children, I mean, you know, you have the little boyfriend, girlfriend handing each other notes and things like that, and that's when it really probably hurt the most, actually, realizing that, um, you know, having adults say that that's not okay and then, then having to ask my parents why. So that was probably the most devastating, but as a when I did get older and started dating, it was, it was pretty rough because I figured, well, at least at that time, you have two consenting adults and they're going to at least be able to respect that, that this person has chosen me, you know, leave it alone. It's not, you know, and even though I know that if it was a certain person's daughter, it wasn't going to happen, but this person chose me, she loved me, so why would, why would right. that be an issue with you, you know? Right. Um, however, um, even, you know, Pretty much every authority that I knew, um, I found issues around the, the race issue. Wow. And uh, even, even dating to where uh, we would get pulled over. Um, you know, if I was driving and she's in the car with me, we'd get pulled over and we would get harassed. Um, I would now, get was harassed. this by all cops or only certain ones? Only certain ones, but it seemed to be at that time, amazingly enough, I mean, it was very consistent and different, I mean, we're talking Highway Patrol County, um, 
uh, so sheriffs and police. So that was that was a bit much. I thought, yeah. you know, a bit extreme. Did you ever blow up on them? Did you get Never. angry with them? Never. That's not my background. So um, I, I'm I'm sure I was angry in some ways, but I was um, I was I would had already had this background. My mom uh, had raised me uh, to read the Bible and to have Jesus as a mentor in my life, and so I kind of had a. I'd say, um, you know, my, my personality I just wasn't a, a person that get, gets enraged very easily. Yeah. Yeah. So it would take a lot. I mean, even fighting, which unfortunately happened a lot, but it was, it was self-defense. And so typically, you know, I never hurt a, hurt a person first um, unless I, they swung in <laughs> and they missed because I was quick. And then I'd hit them, but, you know, because I knew it was next. But uh, unfortunately, there was a lot of that happening. Wow. Getting wow. Jumped and, so, and it never got to, it never got to you? You know, it it got to me in a way that I felt sorry for them, honestly, because especially when when we finally would have parents come to our house to try to arrange things so that the kids could, so we can come out and fight with their kids, or the or our parents. What? Would, yeah, or our parent would yell at my my mom while we're out, in the, um, you know, we're we're at home, and they say go back to Africa or things like that. I realized that. That it was the parents that instilled yeah. those that kind of it's, hatred in the kids. It's true. Yeah. I have a daycare, or I have had mm -hmm. a daycare in my house, and mm -hmm. we had one particular parent that came in. He said, "Because you have a black boy in your yes. daycare, my son's not allowed to beat her anymore or get rid of him." Yeah. And we looked at him and said, "You can leave." Yeah, uh, good no, for you. Yeah, not, uh, not happening. That's unbelievable. Not happening. Yeah. Who do you think you are? Yeah. You have no say here. Yeah. And and I was and amazed. And how long ago was this? You We're know, talking like about a three. Oh, I'm saying two years ago. Yeah, see, this that's was a people three don't realize year old. How, yeah. But mm -hmm. it, it's sometimes hard for me to watch the news. And yeah. when I see the news, I see what is taking place. Yeah. I see the results. Often, what we see is when the the cops yeah. are, or the police officers are dealing, and it's usually, of course, the white police mm -hmm. or not, and they're dealing with a certain group yeah. of people, often in my mind, criminals. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily so, but right. in my mind, because that's how I've been taught and trained. Yes. And, and I see all that taking place, and then I see the results of Ferguson being burned yeah. down. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, is that the answer? Right, yeah. So what would your answer be to that? Well, you know, I, I would say that you were trained to think that way. I was trained to think that way, too. And, right. uh, you know, by media and music. And this is something that impacted me as a young man that I realized that even I could have a fear of another black man walking down an alley because of what I've seen in movies as a child. Wow. And to that day that I, that I, I experienced that. I never even thought about yeah. that. Until yeah. I experienced that myself, I, you know, then I realized, wow, that's the power of having only negative negativity um, as role models, as I mean, you know, where are the role models, you know, yeah. for black men when I was so. a kid? Yeah. Wow. Well, kind of you know, I want to get back to this topic okay. in just a moment, sure. but before we do that, we will be right back. Hello, hi, my name is Sonia Hassey, and I'm excited to share with you about the Bar Marshalls show and the impact that it's having on thousands of people because there are many people that are watching that, are, that have no hope and that are looking for fulfillment in their lives. It's a beautiful thing to see transformation being watched in one show. And many people are being healed delivered and saved through this show. It is very, very powerful. And it is, um, I wanna call it a seed. It is a, it is a seed that is being sown into so many people's lives. Whether walking away, they will never forget those stories because stories are very powerful. And if you really think about it, most people are impacted by stories. How? How did you change? How did this come about? And that's what the Barb TV show is all about. So I encourage you to check out the Barb TV show. Um, you can go to barbtv.org to find out more information um, if you are needing help or how you can help with the show as well. This is Sony Hassey, and thank you for watching the Barb Marshall TV show.
We're talking about racism today. What is right? What is wrong? What is the right approach? And what is it that you can do to make a difference? So you actually married yes. a Caucasian, yes. a white mm. woman. Mm. Then you moved to an area that are almost no black people at all. And is, what do I actually call you guys? <laughs> African-American or blacks? Right. What is the appropriate term? Right, yeah. You know, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it's it's funny because sometimes I'll call myself an African American, and then okay. sometimes I call. It's funny, um, you know. At the time with my my wife, we would kind of joke around about it because I'd say, "Well, you're an Irish American," you know, or she would say, "Well, I'm Irish American. He's African American. If he has to be those two. If he has to be two instead of just American, then." I'm Irish. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Great and, uh, yeah. response. Awesome. Yeah. 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 But I did hear I did hear an interesting quote from a lady that um, uh, her name was um, Raven Simone. I forget if that's actually her real name, but she used to play on the Cosby Show, and she just calls herself an American. Period. She says, "I'm not a Black American. I'm I like American. that. I, I love like that too. That. It's like, why not? Because yeah, that's everybody true. else is either American. Yeah. Why is it that you're Indian American, African American, or American? Yeah. Or yeah. Asian American? Exactly. It, it's that I think that's who cares. Of, yeah, we don't say Caucasian American. American yeah. would be nice. Just to, you know, yeah. I, I t I'm going to. <laughs> that's good. That's yeah. very good. Now here you are. Mm. The marriage goes sour. Yeah. You have adopted a child. Yes. Everything falls in place, yeah. and then everything falls apart. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah. it, it went bad. It yes. went really bad. How did you yeah. deal with that? Yeah, it was it was a real challenge for me, and I tell you what, the biggest challenge was because uh, my ex-wife actually saw everything that I've been through in life, and it impacted her so much that um, she at times wanted to kind of say, you know what, maybe we should, you know, I think she had a real difficulty continuing on. I could tell that she was thinking it might be best that we part ways because of the fact that um, our lives would be easier because um, it'd be less stress for both of us. And that's because of racism? Because of racism, I'm yeah. so sorry to yeah. hear that. Yeah. You she have would, to she, fight. Yeah, she was, she was saying, and, and probably, the, I mean, the camel that broke the, 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 the straw that broke the camel's back or would, would not be, um, and this was before having a child, by the way, just up to that point, which was prior to that, she would she would see people that call themselves Christians treating um, you know me differently, and she would you know hear things and she would notice and she would she would realize that it's really you know up to individuals to make that change. In other words, there's there's still prejudice as well. I mean, just like with people, depending on what the car they drive, it's the same thing with the color of skin. It could happen. Yeah. You could experience that. Even though I was so naive, I thought, well, I experienced this from the world, but I don't experience this among my, amongst my brothers and sisters. And that is not the case. It was a, it's a grandiose dream, and I know the future will be that way, but today is still, we're not there. Wow. We're not there. It must have hurt really bad. How did you overcome it? I would say um, overcoming it, I think, Part of it was going through a divorce, having having this new, wonderful, beautiful baby, and and having you know kind of coming back around from some pretty ugly times, and realizing that um, realizing that people are um, not necessarily any uh, more deserving of the promises held in the Bible, but you know we're all imperfect people. I think I, what I did was I went to this place where I want to be exemplary in that way. I want to just lead with my heart and, and really help, um, you know, help show, you know, by the way that I live my life, that I'm, I'm actually trying to live more like what, what Jesus did and be open to people. But that open does not new... work, Shannon, because yeah. mm -hmm. every time you try to mm -hmm. do that, actually what happens, because I've learned there's two groups, mm -hmm. the show me people yeah. and the prove me people. Mm -hmm. And if the prove me people are there, how are you going to prove to them since you're wrong to begin with? Oh, yeah. I how does that yeah. work? Well, yeah. You know, yeah. how was that even possible? Yeah. Or do you have to walk the extra mile mm -hmm. and say, I will walk the extra mile. I will forget, forgive. Yeah. I will love you. Does yeah. that even work today? Yeah, that's a good question. I tell you, I tell you probably one of the most profound experiences I had was a, a man in, um, in Oregon. When we moved to Oregon, yeah. um, a man named Sharon White. And he came up to me, he was the first person in my life to come up to me, and he was in his 70s, and he, took, he told me, he says, you know what? He says, I have never talked to a black man in my life. What? I do not know what to say. 
and my family were racist and raised me to be so, and I don't want to be like them. That is awesome. That's not the way I'm supposed to be, so can we yeah. talk about that? It's the first time in my life that's ever happened, and let me tell you, I love that man and respect yeah. him probably just as much or more so than anybody I've ever met. Yeah. And because of that moment, it's not something he did for me, it was something that he, he opened up his heart and he said, there's the way I'm supposed to be as a Christian, and here's the way that I am. Maybe you could help me get there, you know, so we could talk and have that conversation. That was a beautiful thing, wow. especially for a male to do that. A female it would have been awesome, but it would, you know, I, but women tend to be more loving to me anyway, you know what I mean? <laughs> but for a man to do that, I was like, that yeah. was awesome. Yeah, wow. That was awesome. That's the answer, isn't yeah. it? Truth. Truth. And Just being be willing to it. make a difference and being honest yeah, about it. I'm scared. I don't know what to say to you. And I, and I don't want to be scared. I want to love you like I love everybody else. Wow. Wow. That's good. Yeah. Today you have come quite a ways. You've oh, yeah. made huge changes yeah. and you're actually a life coach. Yes. And I want to talk about that. Yeah. And uh, I think you still want that answer that I promised you at the mm -hmm. beginning of the show. And uh, stay tuned because mm -hmm. it's coming. We are here for you. And there are a lot of people that are hurting out there, and you might be one of them. I know God has a plan for you. I know God loves you. And I know God wants you to get to that level that you start seeing the great potential that you have in your life. We want to help you with that. We want to encourage you with that. We have our TV show, The Bart Marshall Show. We have our events. And in any way that we could encourage you or reach you with that, please contact us, because this is not about us. This is all about you. And it says it so beautifully in the Bible, because it says in John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Has your life been destroyed? Has it been killed? I have good news for you. God wants to make a difference. Contact us, barttv.org, or call us, 855-836-1100. I'm talking with Coach Shannon McCoy, who has experienced racism at first hand at all levels. And um, I think if you see where he is today, that you can see that you too can overcome problems that are in your life. Today you are a coach. Yes. Who are you coaching and what is it all about? You know, my, my strong suit has been really with single parent entrepreneurs. And I, I work with single parent entrepreneurs because you know how they get, tend to be completely overwhelmed stressed out, not knowing how to prioritize, and, and really being fearful that they'll ever live up to their full potential. So what I do is I, I help them prioritize and get crystal clear on what matters most in their life so that they could be both the parent and the entrepreneur they always wanted to be. That's what I do. Yeah. Wow, wow. And what, what is the end result that you're looking at with them? Because you're not just all over the place. You're not just no. a counselor for everybody. No. You have a specific group that you're working at. And mm. what is your goal for yeah. them? And, you know, and I picked I pick this specific group because I know it so well, <laughs> for one. And, you know, and I've been back and forth with different, um, different niches, you might say. But I chose a niche to dig in and master the niche of working with these individuals, finding out what their pains are, what... Yeah. what they want to have resolved. But as a coach, when I'm my, you know, with working with anybody, actually, I mean, I could work with anybody because what I'm doing is trying to find out what it is that they're going through, what's their greatest challenge, and then I'm working with them to actually find the solution. I'm not the idea guy. I mean, I've been a consultant before, I've been an advisor, um, but I don't want to be that for someone in a sense that I'm the answer guy, the answer guru, I'm not that person. Yeah. The answers are within each individual. So for me to extract, help them to, to see what's their full potential and kind of like show it back to them and say, here's a mirror of your best self and then helping them to reach that systematically, you know, incrementally. <laughs> and your goal is to do that as fast as possible. Absolutely. Why? Doesn't it take years of counseling to arrive where you need to get? You know, it, it can if we fool ourselves, you know, like, um, you know, believing, okay, well, this is my best while well, I'm limited. You know, I am a single parent. I have a child, so that's my focus. I'm, my, my number one goal in life is to be a good dad. And see, that's true for me. Yeah. However, I could also use that kind of as a crutch to say, well, I'll take this job. I'll be limited in my response with other people and my, my boundaries, set my boundaries in a certain way that um, really is not congruent with my fullest potential. 
you know, my fullest potential may actually be quite different. And a coach could help me do that. I mean, and, you know, I'd say for most of your viewers, their, their coach and their mentor has been Jesus Christ, you know, so that's it. Yeah. We all need that. We all need someone to direct us. But what someone. I like that you are doing, because you're saying, I don't want them to settle for less. Yes. I want them to settle for all. And isn't yeah. that what Jesus Christ is talking about? Yeah. I want you to live that life in yeah. abundance. Yes. And yeah. it sounds like you are that guy mm -hmm. that is going to help them, to show them, to help them in abundance. Because when I was divorced mm -hmm. and I had a one, three, and five-year-old, I settled for less. Yeah. I settled for less. And you know how long I settled for less? How long? About 25 years. Oh, goodness. Yeah. And now you look back at it, was it wrong? No. Did it provide? Yes. Yeah. But it was not the destiny that God had in mind right. for me to live life to the fullest. Yes. And I think that is what you want to teach people. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, because we could, you know, and, and the thing is, is that from my, my experience is, is that humility was so high on my list, but I made my own definitions for humility, my own um, definitions for what selfishness means, and it was actually to a detriment, in a sense. Yeah. It made me kind of play small, and it's almost like pretending to be somebody that I'm not. Wow. In order to make, so what is that all about? Is that God wants us to pretend to be somebody that we're not in order to please Him? No. Not gonna cut no. It. Yeah. yeah, so we, we have to really look at our definitions and make sure that it's actually a scriptural definition, not our own, and not the ones that our parents kind of passed down to us from a limiting um, viewpoint. Yes, very yeah. much so. Mm -hmm. So I know if people want to be interested in what you do and your mm -hmm. coaching, they can contact you. Yes. But you could give us one fast snippet uh -huh. of what really could help them right now. What could help them right now? I would say to really be clear with you know, really get clear about what it is that you actually want in life. And, and when you get crystal clear about that, you know, about what you really want and, and actually being open and honest, especially if you could find somebody to be open and honest about it and actually allow someone to challenge you on whether or not they see that within you. Like, for instance, am I living my life according to Lee or or do you see that in me or what? You know, but but if actually give that other person's permission to be honest, to be yeah. direct and the more direct and honest, the better. When you give them that permission, they might tell us some things that'll, that will, may make us even want to cry because we think, well, that's not the way I, I see myself or want to be seen, but to, to, um, to realize if we're walking down the path that we say that we that's want to walk. That's what it is, yeah. yeah. Uh, Shannon, I have one more question for mm. you, and it is an insulting question. Mm. I, my apologies mm. right up front for insulting you right mm. now, but I have a reason, so okay. can you hear me out? Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. I know the viewers want to know mm -hmm. if the child you adopted is black or white. Oh, that doesn't bother me. <laughs> and is it important? No, it is not. No, but yeah. I have a reason for asking. Oh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. So yeah. what would your answer she, be? She is she's African American or black. She is um, she's also Native American and she's uh, German. She's a mix. Yes. That is awesome. Yes, yeah. Now, does she she's have American. to deal with this? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So does she have the reason, does she deal with racism because yeah, yeah. of you? She does from time to time, uh, even because of her skin, because she's darker than, uh, a lot darker than her mother. Um, uh, not as dark as me, obviously, but she gets, you know, she's even been called taco girl at school, which what? is like by little kids, uh, by this one particular kid that has a tendency to have those, he has those tendencies where he's calling right. people by what he thinks it is. he should based so on So my TV question to you is, mm -hmm. what do you tell your beautiful daughter yeah. in how to deal with racism? Yeah. yeah, I give her the honest up to date on that because I wanted her to know what I've been through and what other people have been through of all different races. And because I want her to know and her heart to be inclined to to reach out to people and to be more of a, um, you know, support the, the underdogs or what have you. Right. But um, right. so, yeah, so I was really clear with her, you know, not, not real graphic or anything about some atrocities or I only let her watch certain things that are age appropriate. Um, but she just turned nine and she's very clear as to uh, racial is. issues. You yeah. prepared yes. her. 
Yeah. Shannon, and her mother did as if well. somebody wants to connect with you mm -hmm. or to find out about your yeah. coaching, yeah. where can they go? They can go to, I have a website, uh, coachmccoy.com, so it's www.coachmccoy.com. That is and awesome. That's a good way, yeah. Thank you for being willing mm -hmm. to talk with me about racism, and it is an honor for me to call you my brother. Oh, it's an honor Thank for you. you to be my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I gave you a, a question in the beginning in how to deal with racism. What does the Bible say about that? And I'm passionate about this because, to be honest, it makes me angry. And um, this is what it says. A new commandment I give to you, and it's in John 14, verse 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. That you also love one another. I give, you to, I give to you this commandment, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. It doesn't say color. It doesn't say skin. It doesn't say culture. It does not say that anywhere. And I want to talk to you. For those that are there right now thinking there should be a difference, let's change that get to know the person and start finding out the truth first. And there is one more, Romans 2.11, for there is no partiality with God. So what is the answer right now to racism? And there is only one person that I found that said it more clearly in 1963 in his speech called The, Th the Dream than I ever even could have imagined. And I want to read the end section to you. When I read this whole speech by Martin Luther King, I started crying because he hit it right on. And this is what he is saying. When we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village and hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentile, Catholics and Protestants, will be able to join hands and to sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. And that America is for you. If Martin Luther King was able to stand up in peace, to not react to the violence that came to him that was so undeserved, so can you. He taught us to love, the biblical love, that only God could have taught them. And there is nothing more we could learn as from that. So burning down villages is not the answer. And sitting still and not reacting and seeing our brothers and sisters out there and just having them to deal with it is not the answer either. Let's love. Let's make a difference. Call me, 855-836-1100, or connect with me, barbtv.org. I want to hear your story, and I want you to know, whatever color, whatever race, or whomever you are, God loves you unconditionally, and he will be there for you. Have a great day.